Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks. I don't know what to say after I listen to that very, very long recording. I want to welcome you to Vibrant Living. I want to ask you to become aware of what's behind you. Become aware of what's behind you, what's on your sides. You know, so much, so much comes in our life peripherally on our sides. Right? There's what we're sensing and what we're seeing. What we're sensing and what we're seeing. Well, vibrant living is an ongoing thing. It's not just one definition. I can never come up with enough words. It's an experience. I want to welcome you to the experience of vibrant living and meeting in the remarkable. I want to thank John Adago for being with us the last few weeks exploring with us some of the, you could say hidden, but sometimes they're not hidden. Sometimes they're right in front of you. I want to welcome Tim, uh, Tim Fone, Tim Fone. I'm, I'm practicing your name right in live time, Tim. So close. Yeah. <laughs> phone. Phone. I knew I had it when I talked to Lisa. Oh, That's the funny thing. Right? Phone. Hey, you did great, Glenn Brake. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, your your magazine. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep playing with the name. Four legs and a tail. I thought I would get that one correct. So we have what I what I call a vibrant collaboration. I, from the moment I met you, I felt this easy sense of flow. And uh, funny enough, when the story I'm about to tell about vibrant dogs is going to be a very unusual story because how I really came into not just dogs, but seeing things a little bit differently, how to do with meeting this very unusual psychiatrist. We call him the mystic psychiatrist who is studying very unusual things. I don't want to welcome Lisa LaRose, my producer, writer. For, she'll be in the next issue with our first article on the Vibrant Living Challenge on wonderment and wonder. Welcome, Lisa. Um, Thank you, Glenn. You're very welcome. So, welcome, Tim. Well, welcome, you. Tim. Welcome, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now, welcome, sir. Janet, did we have you right this second, Janet? Right second, Janet. Oh, Janet's I don't not hear here. Janet. I don't either. Hope you'll come on board. She's a, our, our connection from Kauai. Um, so about 33 years ago, I met a psychiatrist in Vermont who was studying the impact of light on us. Because I don't know about you guys, but I was always a very different human being. When the winter came, I was in one mode. But when spring came, especially when it got very warm and sunny, I changed significantly. And I met the psychiatrist who was studying that. He was studying natural light, full spectrum light. He was changing the lighting in the Vermont public schooling. And I met him one day. He was a very unusual guy. He used to carry a canvas bag and, and he would have his books. He was a book he was ongoingly sharing his studying. As an example, at the time, hard contact lenses, there was an increase in cancer uh, in women who wore hard contacts because the light, light is so profound. It changes our whole our genes, our brain. So I met him, and we became very close. He used to call me Boober, <laughs> after Martin Boober, the Hasidic rabbi mystic. And the first, so the first time I hung around, you know, Wayne, he would say things to me that I felt that I noticed. Like he said to me, "People, some people are watch stoppers. Some people interfere with electronics. These are people who are very tuned in, and they also have a certain kind of illnesses, a certain proneness." And, and things, these are things I already had discovered, but he was in the science of it. He would go to Dartmouth and he would present. And 
So we went through a, a, three, a few different stages. The first stage was full spectrum lighting and the study of full spectrum lighting and how that impacted us, including how incomplete spectrum lighting impacted us. So it made people hyper, it changed the sleep rhythms. And we're so close to these things, we, we, once we be, the more industrialized we become, we lose touch with the cycles and rhythms, right? So we became close, and he would just call me up and say, Boover, I'm studying something that I want to share with you. So the next thing he studied was tennis. And, of course, I love tennis. I, I had the honor of playing an exhibition match and putting some retreats together to a former number one tennis player, which is another wild story. But the story is the, story is the same. It's all about could we sense and see this dimension of light that's hard to put our finger on. Can we sense it? Can we feel it? Tim dimension often. So uh, anyway, I go, to, I go to his office now, and he shows me something called the grid work. The grid work. And he, on the grid, he looks at people as an example of very healthy, and he looks at people with things like um, Lou Gehrig's disease, Parkinson's. These are things that modern medicine doesn't have explanations for. They have explanations. They don't have really know how to treat it. So he would say to me that certain people get stuck on the grid. They get stuck. They, their energy, their systems aren't flowing. And so he, tennis actually moves the energy. Because I always had this relationship to tennis where I couldn't understand why I liked it so much. And he says, well, Boober, what it is is you're moving energy from one side to the other and circling it again. And it's changing you, shifting your energy. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, yeah, that's true. To explain what I, I intuitively sensed, that was cycle two. The cycle two was tennis and the grid. And he did, he did my grid, did my son's grid. Now, the next time he calls me up, this is like, this is over a period of many years. Now, the next time he calls me up, we had put an event together in, in Vermont. And we put an event together on how to be the coldest day on the planet. It was very, very cold. We had maybe 110 people come to an event that we would have liked 300 people to come to. Sometimes the events have a way of picking you or changing your numbers rather than you choosing them. Kind of like dogs, they choose you. So I, I, I go to the event. He says to me one thing that day. He says, Boober? He said, yeah, he goes, he goes, you are a master. You're a, you're a cosmic connector. He goes, the, you, know, you get taken care of by making connections. That's you. So I sit down. We have 10 people come to, to Wayne's lecture. Now, the woman, this one woman showed up. She was very quiet. I barely noticed her. And she sold 150,000 books based on that lecture on bipolar, the hidden causes of, of, of bipolar and how to deal with them. And he says to me, he says to me, he says, Boomer, he goes, you can't predict certain things in life. And he goes, he goes, that's called being in the Tao. That's in the flow of life. Now, the next call, phone call I get from him, I know he's studying Rottweilers. I know that. And he says to me, Boomer, Rottweilers deal with issues of life and death. They're very different than Labradors. They're very different than the other dogs. They can actually help people who have cancer and these other illnesses. They can help them move that energy off them the illness off them and put it back into the earth because that's the purpose of Rottweil. They deal with fearsome energy and they don't fold. They're not going to pass away from an illness. They're going to pull it off you. And I'm like, wow. And he goes, Boover. I said, yeah, he's come up to my office because I want to do a grid chart on you and your son. So I go up to Vermont and uh, I, he does the grid. And he goes, oh yeah. He goes, Rottweil, this would be good for Don and my wife and my daughter. And he goes, uh, as always, he says, Boover, I'll see you. And then he, just, he always used to say something like, I'll see you, you know, in the next, in the Dow thing, or I'll see you. He'd always say something to me, and, and I thought I just saw, I, I, we used to call Wayne either the mystic or the crazy psychiatrist, depending on how much we liked him that day. <laughs> so, so the next time I go. you look at Rottweilers different now? I look at Rottweilers really different after that, yeah. Because I noticed, so here's my experience. I want to run this by you and Lisa. So the next time he calls me, he says, Boober, it's like Wednesday morning. He goes, Boober? He goes, I have Ben. Ben's waiting for you. I'm like, who's Ben? And he goes, Ben is going to be your dog. And so he goes, Booby, get up here. I got to give you Ben. So I go up there. I take downstairs an L.L. Bean uh, dog bed. I take about a hundred ton of dog food. And he goes, I'll be in touch, Booby. He goes, this dog is going to change everything. And I leave. So I'm sitting there with the dog. It's the first time I met the dog. And he puts his paws on my, my right thigh. He bangs into the radio a few times with his paws, puts his head on my lap. And I was thinking, well, I guess this is Ben. And I drive home. I had to make a quick errand before I left, uh, before I came back out. So Ben's in the house. My wife's in the house. She's upstairs doing yoga. So where does Ben go? Ben goes upstairs. When she's in a back bend, just about to head down to the, to the mat, he lays right underneath her, though she's, he's unavoidable. She's got to like, she's got to make contact with Ben, him. And he's a pretty scary looking dog you know, to some people. So, so, of course, she lays on him. He says, yes, okay, it's cool. You can lay on me. 
And my daughter sees him when she comes home and she runs to her room and she locks the door and says, like, she wants nothing to do with him. And my son comes home and it's like his best friend has arrived. Mm. So it began. This, this sort of unusual thing began. And uh, that was my, I guess you could say, my official introduction, induction into Vibrant Dogs. It was the first time I, I had some recognition that dog was more than this recreational creature that barked a lot and ate food. I, I realized, wow, this is another whole thing. And that the wonder and energy of dogs, all dogs, has you know, unique, profound contributions in ways I couldn't describe. But I was, I was in the midst of it now. And uh, here, here it was. I had this kind of, you know, this introduction from Wayne studying Rottweilers and kind of what they meant in our lives. And, uh, and by the way, my dog came out of, I mean, my dog, my daughter came out, I talked to her this morning. I told her I was telling the story actually this morning. She came out of a room within like four days and she gets the notion she's going to so-called train Ben. So I come home that day and there's a flower on, on Ben's collar she put on there. And he started to do things that she's kind of, you know, suggesting that like she had, she had put a flower, a flower on his collar. So over the years, you know, Tim and, and Lisa, I, I started to meet people and I would just let them tell me the stories about their dogs. And what I noticed about this story was it usually was about having a bigger life. It was usually about noticing things and a relationship and having a different rhythm. And I realized as I was doing a series with a cardiologist in New York, he wanted, he wanted to write a book called My Patients Are Healing Me. I realized that most people's dogs, if I had to use that language, are healing them. And that was really the beginning in an unofficial way of vibrant dogs. Hmm. Well, they do have an impact on people. They, you know, first they steal your seat, then they steal your heart. So. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, that's a great yeah. quote. So. That's a great quote. So, so, how, so, yeah. so, what's the, what's the status of Ben these days? Oh, oh, God, this is oh, it's a tearjerker. I want to tell you guys that as much as I had a relationship with this psychiatrist, that we were like brothers. It was really. And I loved and trusted him, and he loved and We had this relationship, but one day, and being he's, he's an eccentric. He's an eccentric. So as I tell you this next part, I know you guys are going to cry, but it's true. He comes back to my house eight months later. We've been sort of sharing Ben. He, he'd go away, and sometimes he couldn't take Ben with him, but mostly he was with us. But he comes back one day, and he says, Boober, he goes, I know you're not going to like this news. And I said, why? What am I going to like? And he goes, he goes, me and Ben, <laughs> ready for this one? Me and Ben, are, we're in the Civil War together. He goes, I got to take him back for a while. So he takes Ben back. And the last time I saw Ben, the Rottweiler, our family member, our beloved teacher, I mean, he was just, a, he changed our whole lives. And to this day, I guess anytime my son sees a, a, a Rottweiler, he thinks of Ben. And, we, you know, we always almost cry because it's, it's that strong. So basically he took Ben back. I was up in Brattleboro, Vermont, and I saw Ben, and Ben ran to me crying. And I said to Wayne, I said, could we talk about a relationship where I could see Ben again? And he said, no, he goes, we could discuss anything you want except Ben. And over his, right on his heart, by the way, he has this patch of white hair. And someone said to me, well, he never really, he's still hard for Wayne to open his heart. And I was like, wow, this is, this is just really sad. Um, so we let go of Ben, I think, within, I think we had him about nine months. And so I never saw him again, I, and I heard he had passed away at around seven. And I would say it was the greatest opening in my life to, to a dog and a, and a dog being medicinal. And clearly, you know, it, it changed the whole relationship we, our family had with each other. So when I read, I read this beautiful book called Dog Medicine, I thought, you know, that's a beautiful book, by the way. I felt like maybe I should, I should do this format because I feel there's so many un, there's so much that people have to share that is, somewhat uncommon or unusual and yet profound and, and wondrous about people's relationship to dogs and how dogs are these, you know, are so profoundly medicinal. And sometimes the dog changes the whole course of their relationship with human beings and others. And when I saw your homegrown publication, I, and I got a sense of you, Tim, I felt like, wow, this, I, needed, I needed someone I wanted already to have an existing presence who really had a certain yes when I would speak to him. And that was you. You, you came in as one of the cast members. And Lisa, of course, has like, I don't know, 13 dogs. So she was, she was in that realm as well. Maybe 14. I might, I might have missed one dog. I don't know. Is it 13 or 14? Probably a different number, right? Uh, yeah. Little dogs. We have six big dogs and then, uh, 13 little ones. So house full of lots of love and oh. kitties too. 
Yeah, I think you start losing okay, track after sure. about seven, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know what? What's, well, the little ones, all of my little ones equal, you know, less than two big ones. So <laughs> they're easy. They're easy. The, the big ones, they're uh, mostly shepherds. So they, uh, they, it's a whole coat dynamic, but lots of love. You know, I can have uh, the most challenging day and then feeling faces in their waggy tails and uh, it all goes away. And uh, they do, they just, you know, no matter what's going on, they're there with unconditional love. Which That's I'm what sure you gotta you love know. about a dog. Well, you know, my yeah. my youngest daughter, who who does some writing for the magazine at times, she's she's a she's very introverted. I mean, she's a she's a, a total pet person, and you know, she she gravitates more toward the pets than she does the people. But I do notice <laughs> that when she takes her dogs to the dog park. All of a sudden, it's completely different. She's much more social, much much more of an extrovert, and I think it's the having the dog there, and it's that first thing that you have in common with everyone in that same environment, and that is you all have dogs and you all want to be at the dog park, and it just makes it very easy for an introvert to 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 be vocal if they have something like you know, a wingman, or in her case, a wing dog. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so sweet. <laughs> well, t- Tim, I went to your, your website, which is, you know, for our, our listeners, it's the number four legsandtail.org, and um, I have to say the covers of your, your spring issues, I don't know which one's more adorable, but I got it. I think I'm mm. looking at the smiling cat, even though the dogs normally steal my heart. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a question. So what was your inspiration to, to start the magazine and um, and just tell, oh, here we are taking a we're gonna We're going to continue. We're going to continue with that beautiful question here in Vibrant Living. And uh, four, logs, four, four Legs and a Tail, publisher Tim, co-host for Vibrant Dogs. Stay with us. I'm Glenn Brooks. Your life's precious. Enjoy it. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Conflict comes in many forms and often triggers a fight or flight response. Some of us gravitate toward conflict, while many will stop at little to nothing to avoid it. Unfortunately, what we resist will persist, which often forces us to face our fear and deal with it head on. Join me during my show, Conflict Rising, as I discuss the important role of conflict with leaders who have moved through it successfully. Tune in Thursdays at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Remember, it's always darkest before the dawn. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Glenn Brooks, you're listening to the Vibrant Living Network. And uh, well, Alicia the Rose, hey, we got an article coming out in the next issue of Ohm Times Magazine in the Vibrant Living section. And talking about the Vibrant Living Challenge and, of course, wonderment and wonder, along with uh, Tim Phone. Tim, I got to say your last name correctly. I was so excited. Phone. No, it's, and it's not phone. It's, it, it is hone. It's hone. Hone. It's hone. <laughs> All right, you hone. You say okay. it like phone, but it's hone. Sounds phone. like phone. <laughs> Sounds like phone, but it's yeah. hone. Okay, right. hone. Okay, right. I thought I had it. I was so yeah. happy. All you right, were so close, too. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. I, lo- I like hearing that. I, can, I wish more of my, uh, you know, he teachers felt that way. They, they would like saying you're not close. Leave the room. Which was good because that really started my, 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 me started reading, which we're going to get into with the Kauai Writers Conference. We got David coming up, David Kane, in a little bit. So, Lisa, you were asking 
about uh, – ask your question again. We're fresh back from the little pause there. What's the question that you were just asking about? Was it, was it about one of the covers? Of, well, no, actually, I, I yeah. was asking Tim what was the inspiration uh, for starting the magazine and, and just uh, maybe tell us a little bit about the journey that brought you into the publishing world. Well, you know, it was kind of funny about, uh, oh, it must have been like nine years ago, I was publishing the, the local phone book. And at that point, you know, phone books were still popular, and we were making a lot of money, and, and, and it was great because I really only had to work from April 1st until Labor Day. Mm-hmm. And my youngest daughter was in the vet tech program at, at one of the local colleges, and she was just about ready to finish up, and she ended up getting pregnant with our first grand daughter and so the school said hey look because of the liability issues involved you're going to have to drop out uh you can come back after your baby's born but you're going to have to drop out and mm-hmm. she was like oh dad what am i going to do i still love pets and well, you know I, i'm the struggleless <laughs> i said well you know what honey i've heard a little pet magazine and you can be my writer so oh, i did so absolutely cool. no research on, on magazines well, and congratulations and I thought it was going to be nothing but advertising for doggy daycares and vets, but lo and behold, it seems like everybody around here has a dog, a cat, or a horse. And so only about 30% of my advertisers are actually directly related to the pet or animal industry. The rest of them are all like you know car dealers and insurance companies and optometrists. And uh, the magazine just took off, and so I sold my interest to the phone book to my business partner, and and uh, we started Four Legs and a Tail and then expanded from, you know, the, the Lebanon, New Hampshire market. And we do another version up in the Burlington, northern Vermont area and another one down in the, the Rutland, Middlebury area and another one down in the Keene, uh, Brattleboro area. And the thing has just taken off. Wow. And, and now, we, now we got vibrant dogs in there and working together. I got to do one little thing. I want you to – I want you to um, – dang. I don't know. I got I to gotta do a fancy move on my, my speaker set, which ain't so easy. Um, I have an idea. I have an idea. Tell me, what inspires you about vibrant dogs? Like when you heard the, the name, what kind of spoke to you about it? Tim, I, I want to say it's always been so easy to explore with you. Um, by the way, that's how, I, that's how people come in. They seem to have this. It's another, um, it's another, it's another way. It's a different... Uh, you know, I, I say in my business that I teach people how to build their business without competing. So maybe you got that Vermont thing. You, I know you don't live in you live in New Hampshire, but you still got a Vermont quality about you. Oh, I've lived in Vermont for 30 years, I, but I like the tax structure in New Hampshire much better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's an honest response. You know, and, you know, and the, and the thing about the you know the thing about the magazine is you know when I started at Lisa. You know, I figured, all right, I've owned pets, dogs, cats, whatever. I've owned them and been around them for, you know, 40 years of my life. So I figured, okay, I must know something about, you know, about these these animals. And, you know, as I started, you know, as I started doing the magazine, there was more and more things that, you know, I would I'd find out about. And it's like, gee, I didn't know that, and I didn't know that, and I didn't know that. And so then I kind of figured, well, you know what, if I'm an average pet owner, a lot of people are probably average pet owners, and if I didn't know it, maybe they don't know it. And so, you know, I kind of take the approach of, you know, we, we, we do a combination of things. You know, when I was a kid, Reader's Digest was a big read in my house. And so I kind of mm-hmm. looked at that same format where, you know, we keep the story short. We keep them, you know, uh, some some fun and entertaining stuff and some educational stuff and, and some, some, some drama stuff. But... Um, you know, we really use it as a, as an educational piece too. And you know, the other thing, as I talk to local veterinarians, you know, they would all say the same thing to me that, you know, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet. And so, I when I started looking at some of these 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 pet websites, you know, come to find out a lot of pet websites are really nothing more than sales pitches for a pet product. And so that's where a lot of that inf- misinformation comes from. And so that's mm-hmm. why I, you know, have relationships with nutritionists and, and trainers and, and veterinarians, you know, people that I know have been in the business for the good of the, of the dog and not necessarily the good of the bottom line or a specific product. And I think that's very important mm-hmm. for people to understand when they're, when they're, you know, in this day and age of, of Google, where we can, you know, find find information readily at our fingertips, but it's not always the right information. 
Right. You know what I'm going to need to do, Lisa? I'm going to need to jump off for a second. I want you guys to check out uh, Tim Holmes Magazine and, and realize we're connecting with Tim. He'll be a regular. And we're going to have very interesting features. We're going to talk to people, I think, that have, have really impacted the, the betterment of dogs and people and give you a whole different view on dog training to, like, dog Oh, God. Being in tune with your dog and being in tune with your dog is a whole different universe. You know, the first time I met, I met a, a significant educator, dog educator, he said, imagine if the dog was so in tune with you, you just had to, like, basically whistle almost, and the dog's going to come. The big dog's going to be the dog, dog's so connected to you. And he said to me, the dog exists in two states, just two, an electronic state where they're more prone to bite and be aggressive, but it exists in another state, kind of a um, – this other – state i'm probably forgetting what he called this electric it's a rooted state where the dog just interested in you so he said if you could be con be aware of those states and be in tune with the dog your dog's your mirror so the dog's totally going to mirror you and it changed my relationship being around dogs and, and i saw the whole training world very differently we're going to get into that um tim i want to thank you for being on i'm only we're going to announce this we're going to do something regularly and i want to welcome everybody to the new world of vibrant dogs and, and vibrant people together and I need to get, I need to do one thing before our next segment. I'm going to call Chris back. So Lisa and Tom, uh, Tim, Tim Hone, I thank you deeply for being on. I got your foot name down now, so I'm, you know, I'm so happy. Well, you know, you can get a tattoo on your right arm, so that way you won't forget yeah. next time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, you know, you know what's interesting? You know what's really interesting? I talked about sensing and seeing, and I've done tons and tons of exploring on my, uh, thinking styles. And my thinking style, I used to always feel very, um, like, I realize I see things peripherally. Like, as an example, I could sense things behind me out of my sides. And when I started to work with speakers, I realized their, their fears came from a more linear perspective. And so part of what happens in my brain style is, with, particularly with people's names, it rests in a different part of my brain. And so it's just, but at the same time, if I walk into a room and I meet 100 people, I could sense the way they move, and I could sense them at the level of being instantly. That's the paradox of it. So, nice names, names, very tricky. Sensing who they are, where they come from. Like, I could pretty much walk up to someone and tell them a story about their life that they'll feel is right on. But if you ask me to remember their last name, maybe not. Well, you know, so, I, I actually, want to thank you. That yeah. Sense you were calling tell me. me. Phone. And you, as yeah. you just found out, I used to publish the phone book. So maybe exactly. that's where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> See, you may have more power than you think, Glenn. <laughs> that was good, Tim. I like that. That was good. So I want to thank you. We're, we're going to announce our next show with Tim. We're going to start getting this, this the word out there. For, oh, by the way, we're going to, to Patreon over the next couple of weeks, the largest, one of the largest social media sites for meaningful programming and innovative programming. So I'm very happy about that. Lisa, I'm going to get back out in about two minutes, and then we're going to have on David Kay from the Kauai Words today, Kauai Writers Conference. We're going to talk about our marriage with them and our new segment on vibrant writing in a moment. Uh, Lisa, just I guess you could escort David to, to the lounge and say, say, say thank you to him, and I'll be back in about a minute. Okay. Well, hey, I, I will talk to you later then. That's, I'll give you a call later. Thank you, Tim. All right, be, you're welcome. Yeah, hey, thanks, and nice to meet you, Lisa. Yeah, we still have a few minutes, Tim. I just wanted to say, you know, for for I wanted to to give your website out again, um, which is the number four legs and a tail dot org. You can see the beautiful magazine uh, online, which is I really appreciate it because for me to be able to view it. And I, 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 it really does. It features some some things. I, I even on dental care. It looks like it has a really wide variety. I'm gonna have to check out some of the archival issues because it really is important for people to to kind of ground in. You know, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for um, more of a natural approach to to dog treats and to dog food. And and people don't realize some of the junk that's in their their food or even in some of the products that are supposed to keep them healthy and um, and their little bodies just can't handle it. So I think Oh, exactly. Nice. And, the, you know, the, to see even the, I was no, I noticed that the article on, on the horses and, um, you know, how they, they work and interact. And I'm sure as you're coming across and, you know, looking into the interest stories, you know, the some of the heartwarming stories that come out about how dog, dogs have changed people's lives is really quite amazing. So well, there, it, it, it there certainly a... does. And, and, 
You know, and, and the thing of it is, you know, I have a lot of readers because we we publish quarterly, and uh, we, we do about ninety thousand copies each each quarter. So I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big circulation. And you know, you mm-hmm. you commented about the cover, and, and sure enough, you know, if you put a cute picture of a of a puppy on the cover and and, and call it a free magazine, people grab these magazines like they're wildfire. But you know, mm-hmm. I, and I. I, but I do get those 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 real avid readers who will come up to me and say, you know, I love my dog more than I love my pe- than I love people. Mm-hmm. And I always say the same thing. I say, well, you know, it's great that you you know you love your dog so much and you guys have such a great relationship. But I can guarantee you, if you loved people as much as you loved your dog, you would be so much happier. Yeah, and it, that's it. True. Always gives you know a person you know room to think, and that's that's kind of what we try to do here. Yeah, it looks as though they, you have been. So, are there are there some dogs that have touched your lives that we you might want to share a quick story about? Oh, the, all the dogs, all the dogs have touched, all the dogs have touched my life. I mean, I was talking Isn't to a friend why? of mine, and he said, you know, because we also have cats and. And he said, you know, are you a cat person or a dog person? I said, well, you know, I like my cats, but I really love my dogs. Yeah. And I have this, I have this one now. He was a, he was a rescue. He was, he was uh, dropped off at a, uh, at a doggy daycare, and the person never came back. And the oh dog stayed at the doggy daycare for three years. He was in dog jail for three years. And uh, oh the woman who owned the dog kennel, she finally ended up losing it to a tax sale. And the person who bought it, he bought the building, but he didn't buy any of the contents, and he didn't want to keep feeding this dog. So he said, uh, you know, do you want the dog? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll find a home for it. And he, beautiful dog, Alaskan Malamute, part husky, blue eyes. And I had the dog, and I, I, I put a note up for him that he, he was for sale. And people started calling, and... Within a week, he just wormed his way into my heart, and he Aww. is, you know, like Glenn was talking about that 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 electric connection with a dog. For some reason, him and I just connected so fast, and he's a 120 pound Alaskan Malamute, but he's he's as gentle as could be, and and uh, he's just really had an impact on my life at this point. That's so beautiful. I can't. That's amazing. I couldn't imagine leaving a dog and never. And thank goodness the person took care of them for so long. And then the dog found you. What's the dog's name? His name is Maverick. Maverick. And, and the, and the oh, funny thing about beautiful. Maverick is here, here's one of his new claims to fame. So I'm up in New England. So, of course, yes, I'm a New England Patriots fan. So, you know, shame on me. But, <laughs> so whenever the Patriots are in the Super Bowl, I always host the Super Bowl party. And so one of the one of the the ads on the Super Bowl uh, was always that Budweiser commercial where the dog would go fetch the the, the Bud Light. Mm-hmm. And so um, I decided for my Super Bowl party this year, I was going to teach Maverick how to do that trick. And so one of my friends, who's a trainer, he basically told me how to do it. And it's just basically a series of tricks that you basically tie them all in together at, at some point. And so within a weekend, I taught Maverick how to fetch a beer. And so, of course, he was the hit of the Super Bowl party, and everybody was, beer time, beer time, and Maverick would go grab a beer. Well, you know, it was great at that point because it was a Super Bowl party, and it was a novelty. Now, unfortunately, though, there, there, sometimes he doesn't quite understand the command. So there might be occasions when I'm looking for a cup of coffee or I, I, I say something to him at 6 o'clock in the morning, and next thing I know, here's my dog bringing me a beer. <laughs> and it's like, Maverick, <laughs> maybe a little later, but I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to take a brief pause. Uh, Tim, thank you very much. Tim Hone, right, Four you. Legs and a Tail, our new contributing host and partner in Vibrant Dogs. Thank you so much. Great. Well, hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're a deep little talk. I'll give you a call later. All right, we'll talk to you then. Bye bye. All right, all right. So, with any luck, we have uh, da- David. Are you there now? Uh, yes, I am. Do you hear me? Okay. Wonderful. I hear you good. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for being here, David. Deeply. Great. I want to introduce you to uh, Lisa LaRose, one of my co-hosts, one of my, my producer. Um, How are you? You know, David. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, it's a double welcome. Welcome, welcome again, David. I I enjoyed speaking with you. Uh, you know very much about the Kauai Writers Conference and about our 
But I just want to tell, I want to tell a quick story because um, I reflected on my whole life, and, and I want to ask you your experience with books, uh, David. Basically, when I went to school, uh, they gave me books. They gave us books, and uh, my life began to change. I met very, un- I met remarkable people. I met people that we have a segment called uh, you know, experiencing the remarkable and, and meeting remarkable people. Well, basically, I read books about some people, and I started to meet them. One of them, well, actually, the one of them it was, I met was a model named Tony DeMarco. But when I was about nineteen. And she had written a book called The California Way to Natural Beauty. And she tells a story about how she was getting poisoned by the cosmetics. And next thing you know, I was at her apartment in New York City. And I talked to her about putting a seminar together so she could educate people about how she learned to keep herself beautiful and also how she basically changed her mind and changed her whole life. And I came into that and I realized that what I did at school – is I brought the books I wanted to read. I didn't bring the books. I didn't read the books they wanted me to read. So I admired authors of opening up a new doorway of my brain and my, you could say, the sense of flow. The book I wrote thus far, I have another book, it's called Unscripted Power. It's kind of the story of how I came in and how we could come into a different power than we're used to. Like we come into, a lot of us come into a linear orientation to life. You know, it's kind of like I was telling a few shows ago, I had the honor of work, working with, uh, Mario Andretti, and he said to me something very nonlinear at the end of, the, of our conversation. He says, Glenn, he goes, it comes down to not lining your ducks up in a row. Don't line your ducks up in a row. Well, that's a very lateral comment. A lateral thinker is a thinker that sees beyond the dots and that could do all these kind of versatile things. Now, in relation to writing and my vision for working with you and bringing our own group to the Kauai Writers Conference, our vibrant writers, is that – I was on the Mass Pike about 27 years ago, and I'm listening to this tape by Julia Cameron, who had just written The Artist's Way, a bestseller at the time. And she said this one line, David, I want to ask how it how – it, I know that you have, you've had a writing mentor, and I know you're close to a lot of amazing writers. And I, I'm so eager for what we're going to unfold together. So this is what I heard her say, Lisa. I'm going to come back. She says, if your writing teacher in school said there's no chance you could be a writer, she says, I want to tell you, you're going to be a writer. Changed my life that day. Stay with us for vibrant, vibrant living and vibrant writing as we continue. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks for the Vibrant Living Radio Network, Vibrant Writing. I'm on with Lisa LaRose, David Kay from the Kauai Writers Conference. What just what moved you about writing, David? What you're a person as I spoke to you, I realized there's so many uh things that move you. Writing's obviously a big part of your life with the conference. What was your what was the part of you that kind of ignited or felt like writing was going to be part of your life or kind of moved you in that direction? Uh, thanks. Um, well, first of all, it's great to be here on your show and uh, thank to you, talk David. to a, 
uh, a bunch of like-minded people. Uh, the the Kauai Writers Conference really exists to help people uh, realize their full potential, uh, primarily as writers and also as people. Um, I suppose what what moved me about writing to start with was reading. I always liked to read. I, you know, as a kid, I often read three books in a week, and uh, I. I, I find that books that touch me, I mean, you talked mm-hmm. about nonlinearity. Uh, yes. Good fiction is the ultimate in mm. nonlinear mm. guidance, <laughs> a happier life. Uh, one, one, of, one of the key dictums in writing is show, don't tell. In other words, you don't say she felt sad. You say a tear ran down her cheek. Mm-hmm. You don't say he was determined to overcome the obstacle. Instead, you show him taking steps to overcome the obstacle. Good fiction rarely preaches, rarely gives advice to the reader, but by delving deeply into the lives of the characters and bringing them alive, it gives us deep insight and empathy into how they operate and makes it inevitable that we reflect deeply on our own lives. And I think that's why people really, that was one of the reasons why people uh, enjoy reading fiction. I love, I really appreciate what you said. I, I you know, it's funny as much as I've done, I don't know, a lot of studies and, and coach people on thinking styles. I, it's funny, one of the most influential books for its time is called 2150 AD by Thea Alexander. And I realized that it was a science fiction, the first I ever read, but it really opened my world up. It really, because of just that, the way she brought the characters alive and kind of how she was able to distinguish between these two mind states, one of kind of this bigger world of, of consciousness and a sort of a smaller linear path that a lot of us get kind of conditioned into. Um, certainly the island of Kauai and all my teachers in my life have been from Hawaii. Paul Bragg, Joseph uh-huh. Goldsmith, Sid Banks. Um, so there's been this, um, so there's an ambiance and an energy you're doing the conference in November, you know, in my life, you know, David and Lisa, I'm a blinker. And I read, I read Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. And I read it and it was like, he talked about, there's two kinds of blinking, basically. There's blinks where you could kind of see, I could see someone as a speaker, as an example, and I could see not just the, the one talk, I could see three or four talks, I could see their body moving. It's a beautiful way to, you know, to actually work with people, that I could kind of blink and see them. I had this one medical doctor say to me, she say, she paid me such a compliment. She says, Glenn, I went to Brown University. I went to medical school and I had parents, but no one's ever seen me. You see me. Hmm. Um, hmm. So that's, that's really nice. It was beautiful. And I realized that's, that's kind of, so I love, I love your, I love that you said fiction, David. So just because of the, of the legend, I don't know, more than a legend that there's this, I don't know, so many, a mystic, a feeling of Kauai. What about the Writers' Conference specific? And what, this is what draws me to work with you. As soon as I spoke to you, I blinked, and I felt a camaraderie, a safety, and kind of an openness with you that was instant. What, what moves you, or what moves people about the experience in Kauai in November, where it's kind of like getting dark, or losing our vitamin D, and for a lot of people, it's the beginning of winter. What about November in Kauai for your wonderful conference? Well, I would say there are two things, uh, the, uh, the superficial and the profound. <laughs> Superficially, <laughs> yeah. um, Kauai is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Many people think it's the most beautiful island that exists on the planet Earth. <laughs> and I, 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 I kind of agree with that. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just, you know, spectacularly gorgeous here. Anyone that hasn't been uh, is really missing out on uh, a wonderful experience in life. And I'm, I'm fortunate enough to call it my home. I've lived here for almost 20 years now. Um, you know, we're just talking about the, the beauty of the place. It's, it's uh, the diversity of climates and ecosystems is unbelievable. If the whole island is only about 30 miles across, 
but you have climates ranging from uh, tropical rainforest to desert. Mm. The uh, the mountain at the center, Mount Waiale Ale, uh, the top of that mountain is said to be the wettest spot on Earth. It rains about 500 inches a year there. And yet just maybe 15 miles away from there on the western coast, you get about 10 inches of rain a year. And on the north shore, you get more like 100 inches of rain a year, more 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 like typical rainforest kind of wet. So it's it, it's a phenomenal setup. The uh, it's always raining on top of the mountain. And this is the source of many rivers. So you have these beautiful, clear freshwater rivers that are coming down the mountain with waterfalls galore and bringing beautiful fresh water right down to the sunny beach. There you're on the beach, and here's this river with waterfall, and you think, where's all this water coming from? We're just on a little island. So <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, an, it's an amazing place geologically and visually. But oh. on a so deeper level. So, so you, so I was uh, going to say, on, what you're saying is when people come to the conference, book an extra week so you have – not only time to enjoy the <laughs> conference, but because uh, <laughs> you're, I, I would imagine that you know when you you go to the conference, you'd be pretty in, engaged. So I apologize, David. Please finish what you were saying on another yeah. level. Yeah, well that 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 is true, and I'll just uh, before I finish, I'll I'll just mention that uh, many people like to do that. Many people like to either come early or stay late or both, and we have arranged with the Marriott Resort, which is the host of the conference that they they provide a very deeply discounted rates to our members to our attendees uh, about half of their normal rates and these mm -hmm. rates uh continue for 3 days before and 3 days after the event so we definitely encourage people to come early or stay late to to explore beautiful Kauai but mm -hmm. i was i was getting on to saying that the the surface beauty of the island is is wonderful and uh, I think compares favorably to almost anywhere on Earth. But many many people feel that there's kind of a magic about Kauai. So many people notice that the phenomenon of synchronicity tends to happen more on Kauai for them than it did anywhere else. Hmm. Now is this because just being in the uh, the, the beautiful tropical ocean side environment that they relax and in relaxing they are open to um, subtle clues that they could follow to find uh, miraculous coincidences uh, maybe it's that <laughs> is it because the, uh, the the deities of the ancient Hawaiians are still are still alive and working their magic here hmm. maybe it's hmm. that I don't know um, but there are an awful lot of creative, spiritually minded lovers of life that have made Kauai their home. And I've had so many people who have come to the conference who have remarked that this didn't just uh, help them to be a better writer, but it improved their life. Hey, I'm going to, Lisa, I want to say Lisa's going to write for our our vibrant uh, magazine section in Ohm Times Magazine. We've got about 400,000 people. We will be writing on the Vibrant Living Challenge and the experience of wonder, the experience of wonder. You know what I want to do, David? By the way, I love, I love and appreciate what you're saying so deeply. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so every time I, I meet with someone, I have this uh, vibrant collaboration on a vibrant blink. So my blink for you, I didn't even share this with Lisa yet, and Janet, where is my Janet today? Janet Karaf, I love Janet so much. She's the one that actually turned me on to the conference, David. Wonderful Janet. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah, we did, the first time I met Janet, we did a mind performance together on stage in front of an audience. It was pretty amazing. Um, yeah, here's my book. She's great. She lives here, lives here on Kauai. She's lived here for many years. Yes, exactly, exactly. So here's my, here's my thing. I thought to myself, because I said, you know, I, I could bring 100 people to the conference next year, but but what, I, what my blink is, David, is I like to have a section, a regular show, and expand our Vibrant Writer segment to include some of the most interesting uh, coaches around the world, authors, uh, and, and base part of our get-together, because there's no question, we get together and see each other in beautiful surroundings. I call these Vibrant Speaking Summits. 
there's something that transforms us together. There's something that comes, it's called the we brain effect. We come together, and there's many different spiritual names for it. And so I know from now on, David, I want to invite you to be a contributor, and I know that I want to work with the conference, and I want to expand vibrant writing to encompass and embrace the conference. And I also want to help people, many, many people who have different brain styles, different thinking styles, to be able to write from their bodies and their intuition and their movement, and also relational couples, couples that could write together to transform the whole relationship. So I want to say it's a celebration having you today, and I'm, I'm wishing you must uh, uh, ohana and uh, uh, aloha to say the beginning of our relationship. I'm very happy to have you here. I want to give you a chance, Lisa, to, to speak because you're kicking off this wonderful writing series for Own Times Magazine on the Vibrant Living section. What's moving you about the conference? First thing Lisa says to me, David, is I want to go. And I said, you're going. <laughs> so we had a lot of spontaneous moments yeah. around this, David, with you. Oh, yeah. I, I take that for granted that you're coming. Yeah. You know what? I take for granted. Thank you. Yeah. So let me ask you, David, for, for our listeners. So for for somebody that has never heard of the conference, could you kind of give us a bird's eye view of what it's like to be in, in such a, an amazing space where all of this creativity and um, – I, I, I guess the, the other word that I would use is, is wonderment. A wonderment is about to unfold, that, you know, people look around and, and any idea is about to bubble. So could you give us a little bit of an insight about that? Sure. All right. Well, um, to, to start with the, uh, uh, the facts, uh, it's an annual event. It happens in early November each year. Uh, this will be the sixth year. And it has grown to become one of the uh, the foremost and most important literary events in the world. And I think the reason for that is that everybody wants to come to Kauai. Uh, mm -hmm. If I was trying to organize this in Cleveland or Chicago or you know any Midwestern <laughs> city or any, any mainland city really, um, it wouldn't be that easy to attract the best writers in the world to come to it because they say, oh yeah, another meeting. But I have lots of meetings. But if we say, how would you like to spend a week on Kauai? They say. Sign me up. You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, Kauai is our biggest asset, I think. Uh, it, it happens um, early November each year. This year the dates are November 4th through 10th. And it's hosted at the Marriott Resort, which is one of the nicest resorts uh, in the state of Hawaii. Uh, it's right on, right on a beautiful beach. Uh, spectacularly landscaped and water features and be a beautiful, beautiful place, very comfortable, great food. Um, the, uh, the conference is divided into two phases. The first uh, four days, November 4 through 7, are master classes. This year we have 14 mm -hmm. different master classes, and a person can sign up wow. for one morning class, or one afternoon class, or both. Each of the classes uh, runs for three hours, either in the morning or in the afternoon, for four days. So if you sign up for a given class, that's your class for, for four days, for the morning or for the afternoon. And that, so those are the master classes. Each one of those covers a different aspect of the craft of writing, for things like plot and character development, to turning your life into art, to mm. memoir writing, to short story, nonfiction, screenwriting, um, many different aspects of craft, finding your unique individual voice. Mm. So it's not just, I mean, really, they're all about how to write better. But as you delve into the process of writing, there, there are different aspects of it that you want to strengthen. Um, and we have we have teachers who are chosen for, really for two criteria. One, they are all extremely excellent, outstanding writers. But two, they are also outstanding and gifted teachers. And those two things often don't go together. There are plenty of famous writers who, if you put them in front of a group of people, they, they wouldn't really know what to say because you know they they enjoy the solitary pursuit of of their craft of writing, but they are not by nature teachers. 
So there is a subset of great writers who are also great teachers, and those are the ones that we have sought out and invited to be our faculty. So that's the master classes. Then the next three days are the conference itself, which is a, a smorgasbord of, of sessions of all kinds, uh, individual keynote talks by phenomenal writers, uh, panel discussions where uh, two or three or four writers will kick around a particular topic. Uh, then there's a large number of workshops, which are kind of mini versions of the master classes, workshops on, on voice, a point of view, on character development, uh, on plotting, uh, developing a story arc, uh, finding your, you, you, your most authentic voice and sticking to it, all, all these sorts of things, all taught by writers, many of whom are, have names that are household words. And it's a chance to sit in small groups with them and get to know them, have them get to know you. And then uh, the third aspect of it, which is throughout the, the conference days, the last three days, is individual one-on-one -on -one sessions with a whole collection of uh, really top literary agents and publishers so that a writer can send an excerpt from their work to the agent, to the publisher, uh, in advance. The, they will read it and then sit down with you and discuss it with you uh, at, in person at the conference. And yes, there, beautiful. There goals for these yes, beautiful. I just want to well, say, David, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Sure. I want to say that you described a writer's paradise so beautifully. Absolutely. I send you my aloha, yeah, and David, I'll follow up. Thank you deeply. And thank you all for listening. Your life's precious. Enjoy it. David, just wonderful, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. And you guys, your life's precious. Enjoy it. We'll be with you again here in the Vibrant Living Network. And deep thanks for Chris on his wonderful work at Home Times Radio. Thank you.